everyone. How are you guys tonight? It's Thursday night and you guys are live here on the Dixie Bell Paint Instagram and Facebook page tonight with Brandy. Um, my name is Brandy. I'm with Brushed by Brandy. I'm a Dixie Bell Paint brand ambassador and I paint with you guys live here every Thursday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, and so tonight we're going to do a makeover that doesn't even involve paint. But I'm on this side of the camera. I know. Well, we're going to make you over. So you need it. <laughs> You need it. <laughs> You're looking a little quarantine over there. Is that a word? That's the extra 50 pounds talking. Um, you guys, my husband Sean is behind the camera to answer any questions as we go. So pop on and ask your questions. Um, and tonight we're going to talk about Dixville no paint gel stain. Um, so no paint gel stain. This is an awesome product. So awesome. Um, the product that I or the project that I'm working on is a dresser, and I can't put the whole dresser hey, in my workspace right now because I don't have enough space. I have a shipment of pieces going out tomorrow or Saturday, so I've got what seven furniture pieces around. I have no space, so I pulled out some of the drawers to show you. So this is a drawer from the piece that I'm working on, and it's a nice quality, well-made piece of furniture. It's all solid wood um, boxes. Um, and this is actually for uh, a lady who used to work with Sean. And they ordered a bedroom set um, from Tommy Bahama. It's a Tommy Bahama bedroom set. So, you know, you know when you grow up and you want to get nice quality furniture? So they've gotten to go choose their own bedroom furniture. I thought we were still in the college stage. I, I remember <laughs> when, we, when we, like, I mean, we had a bedroom set and then we grew up and we got a nicer one and we felt like we were, I don't know, more mature. Um, but the husband does not want to give up his chest of drawers. And he requested it to be what color? Pink? Yes. So I'm going to surprise him. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, so they want to make this wood stain match the wood stain of their new Tommy Bahama bedroom set. So I'm going to take this old dated oak finish and I'm going to take it into a darker wood stain look that has a little bit of red in it. It's almost a, it's a cherry finish that they chose, but it's a dark cherry. So this is what we're starting with is these drawers here. Okay, so to start with, I'm gonna take these drawers. You might want to check the connection settings in the Google Home app. Oh, that's the Google. <laughs> like who's talking to us? She's talking back. Uh, so the first thing you wanna do is take your piece and you're, you're gonna to wanna to clean it. So I'm taking, this is my white lightning cleaner. Um, white lightning is a granulated formula that you mix into water. Um, so I've mixed it into a spray bottle here, and I'm going to take it, I'm going to clean this. Um, and this is going to remove any furniture polishes. You know, they've taken good care of this furniture piece. It's in good condition. Um, the finish is in really nice condition. You know, I get minimal dirt off of it, just a little bit of finger wear. This is for you, Sue. That's what came off your piece, if you want to know. Um, and then you want to make sure that you rinse your white lightning cleaner with water, too. Can you push those other drawers over to me? I'm going to do them at the same time so I don't have to come back yeah. and clean those. So I don't know if you know this. <laughs> yes, I do know this. <laughs> Here it comes. Here it goes. So I'm just going to take all these drawers we're going to do tonight and I'm going to clean them all with my white white cleaner. Can you take the hardware off of this one for me while you're sitting there doing nothing? What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Trying to get the people a better picture. <laughs> the people. The people. the people. the people what they want. I'm a people person. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not going to be able to answer any questions or read them yeah, since I have I to work. Take, taking the hardware off, I wanted to show you guys what it actually looks like. You know, these are not very dirty. And right off the bat, I can tell you guys, this piece would not bleed unless I took it through um, the existing clear coat. And then this is oak, so it just might bleed. Um, I'm not worried about that. I don't need to use any primers for the look that we're doing tonight. We're going to put gel stain on it, which is an oil-based gel stain. Um, so it's kind of nice because I don't have to worry about any bleed through <laughs> from my piece underneath. So I just want to make sure that I cut through any greases or oils or anything that's on this piece. And I'll show you why in just a minute. Got one more drawer to clean. Making sure that I get into the grooves of the drawer. They did, they did have hardware on them. And usually uh, when there's hardware, you know, people will use that. So that's, that's where the oils are going instead of onto the furniture piece itself. 
Um, this is also, I think, a great way, this look that we're going to do tonight, if you have golden oak cabinets in your home, a lot of, a lot of builders put in oak cabinets for a long time. And if you just want to update them, but you want to keep a wood stained Man. look, it doesn't always have to be with paint. Okay. Everybody's paying attention to the sheets. Oh, I know. I'm <laughs> surrounded by furniture, you guys. If I could do a 360, you guys would see. I've got this piece behind me. I've got a dresser set, a bedroom set, a buffet. I've got two nightstands. I'm surrounded by furniture pieces, and I'm terrified of getting any paint or anything on it. This is actually, you guys will recognize this one. I posted this on my page already. That's this, oops, this piece here. So this is one of the ones getting chipped out tomorrow. And it's got to stay in pristine condition, so under the sheet it goes. Out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, honestly, uh, uh, a little tip about sheets, you guys. I picked these up at thrift stores, old sheets, king size, queen size bed sheets, the huh. big ones I like. Those look brand new. And you know what else? I like to get fitted bed sheets because they've got the elastic around the edges. You can tuck it around the edges of your furniture piece. So I actually prefer fitted sheets. Um, for covering my furniture. Just a little tip there. Okay, the next thing I want to do is, uh, this is a pretty smooth, glossy finish. It's not super high gloss, but it is smooth. It has a clear coat on it. I want to take the sheen down a little bit on this. I want to give my no pain gel stain a little bit of something to bite onto. So I'm just going to lightly sand the um, fronts of these. Um, I'm going to use my surf prep sander now, I don't want to sand so far that I take it down through the clear coat. I don't want to do that. I'm just trying to scuff the clear coat a little bit, just giving it a scuff sand. So um, on my surf prep, I'm going to use, I might use this one here. I think either one of these would be okay. This one is a fine <laughs> sanding pad, but I'm going to go to a medium. And only because it has a little bit of softer backing on it, and I'm not going to turn my vacuum on because it's a little bit loud on camera. So I'm just going to go ahead and lightly sand these, very lightly. My sander on here. Okay, and I'm going to show you guys this so you can see. I just want to get enough to where I, I lightly scuff to where I've taken the sheen down on this finish here. I, I've got sanding dust. I'm going to have to clean them again. But you want to see it, you want to clean before you sand because if you do have oils and gunk and, and things on your furniture piece and you go to sand, it's just going to gunk up your sandpaper. So you're going to do clean, lightly sand, just a scuff sand, lightly sand and clean again is what we're going to do. So I kind of feel print. like, you remember the old game show Password? Oh my gosh. I used to love game shows. Yeah, yeah. I to, yeah, yeah. Like I need, to come, up, I need to come anyway. up with a... <laughs> The and the oh. word is <laughs> okay. scuff. <laughs> That's for you, Brittany. All right, so I'm just giving these a light scuff sand, just to give some tooth to my finish. What kind of sand? <laughs> um, see, then I have to. Then I feel like I need to get out of the star and be like other words for for scuff. Uh, you like that? <laughs> I think it's funny you show your age by making it look like it's a book. Like it's a book. No, I was swiping. Swipe left. Swipe left. Swipe left. Wrong app. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, I like this piece with my surf prep because I have these grooves here and the sanding pad gets into the groove. See how I can compress it down? And it's, it sands in the groove for me at the same time. That's the bonus of, of the surf prep sander. Oh, chocolate chip sandwich. banana bread. Oh, I know. Oh, that sounds good. Okay, one more. So this is a pretty easy step. Just a light scuff sanding. And you could do this by hand with a, a sanding sponge. Uh, you just want to use a light abrasive. I'd say probably a 120 grit if you're just going to do this by hand with a sanding sponge. Use... 120 you don't want it to be so fine that it just uh smooths your finish even more because you're trying to add tooth you're not trying to smooth it even more you're not trying to polish the image yet. okay and i 
just need to remove now my sanding dust. So I'm just going to spray these. You could use a tap cloth for this, but I'm just going to take a damp cloth and take out the sanding dust right now. I don't want to incorporate it into my finish. So, so far we've cleaned with white lightning. We just scuff sanded and now I'm just removing my sanding dust, cleaning it again. Making sure I get all the dust out of the crevices. Just cleaning some drawers. Dirty drawers. Dirty drawers. I feel like these are ready to put my finish on. So let's start talking about the finish that I'm going to do. Now, I wish I could have shown you guys the sample, but she brought a sample of wood because when you go buy nice bedroom furniture, they give you like a little sample of your wood. Um, so I actually had something to compare it to. And when we looked, I pulled out my gel stains and it was a little bit in between the colors of See if you guys can see these. Espresso is the darker color here, and Georgian cherry is a little bit red. It's a deep red, a cherry finish. So it was a little bit in between these. The Georgian cherry was too red, and this was a little too dark. But you know what's so cool about the gel stains is you can mix them. You can custom make your own stain colors. So these gel stains come in white, black, gray. Um, there's a walnut and espresso, two shades of brown. So you can make, you know, a deep gray if you want, a, um, you know, you could take your black and make it into a little, uh, uh, and your brown and make it into kind of a charcoal brown color. You can mix your own colors of stain. If one of these is slightly off from what you want, so what I want to mix, I'm going to take this dish and I can probably plan that I'm not going to want to wash this out because these are oil-based gel stains. So I want to mix equal parts. I'm going to take roughly 50-50 mixture. Not going to measure it out except to say that's about the same size scoop that I want to get of that's the Georgian cherry. This is about how close we get to cooking right here. Yeah, <laughs> this is delicious. Wait till the kids taste it. And then about the same size scoop of my espresso. And I'm going to mix these together and this will hopefully get me to about the color that I want my stain to be. Just gets me to a really deep, pretty cherry color. It's really pretty. You know, the red. Uh, red tones are kind of out in stains, so if you darken up the cherry, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a second scoop of that and a second scoop of this. So we got a couple of people that are as a technical thing that are freezing up. Sheila being one of them, but we are about as strong as we're gonna get. Did you, did you check the signal on it? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's right. It's pudding. Yeah, it is. It's like a it's like a pudding texture. So the Dixie Bell gel stains, let me tell you guys an experience with gel stain. When I first started, um, I purchased Minwax gel stain from the hardware store. It's easily available. You find it everywhere. You hear all these great things about gel stain. They are not all created equal, you guys. I used the Minwax gel stain and I hated it. It is an awful, awful product. Minwax, if you're watching, take it off the shelf. <laughs> take it off the market. It. It's awful. And I thought, I just assumed that they were all the same. And so I was really hesitant to use gel stain again. Um, and then I used another brand and they're not all the same, you guys. And the Dixie Belle gel stains, having used multiple brands, are one of the nicest ones on the market. So don't think they're all the same. If you've used Minwax, throw it away. It's awful stuff. So I've got this really nice creamy color. And the nice thing about these gel stains is they can go right over the top of an existing finish. So I do try to wear gloves when I'm staining because I don't like my fingernails to be stained brown for the next week of my life. Although here's a tip, if you get stains on your uh, skin, story time, <laughs> if you get stain on your skin, olive oil will remove it. And I know that because we were... What's the story time? I'm going to tell a story. Yeah, I... About moving all my... Wow, thanks for... About uh, moving on my uh, stains we were um, I got new shelving in my workspace and we were moving all my stuff to new shelves and my kids were helping and they picked up one of my stains and my son dropped it and I was sitting on the ground just like this putting them on the shelf dropped the gel stain and covered me in gel and stain it wasn't a gel stain it was a liquid stain um, covered me in stain and if so 
I took a shower and I used a few different things. I tried Dawn dish soap that didn't cut through it. It was all over my skin, guys. Awful. Um, I should have offered to pressure wash it. Yeah, yeah, I wish prob- you would have. It's still staying on the garage floor. I may have had more fun than you. Let's start there. <laughs> first things first. Um, um, so I tried a few things, and the and the Dawn dish soap didn't work, but um, olive oil in the shower took took stain off my skin, and my skin was super soft, and I smelled like olive oil, so what's not to love? I just want to go ahead and apologize to the guy that's going to empty our septic tank when it happens. Yeah. <laughs> Tons <laughs> of olive oil, oil in it. <laughs> Like that episode of Seinfeld where he takes a bath in the butter and he smells like... Oh, he's something. going after the chicken, the isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so really quick, just a question. Can you throw this over an existing stain? Yes, that's what I'm going to do right, right now. I've not taken this stain off. I've not taken the stain off. I've not taken the clear coat off. This is the existing finish. All I did was sand it to add a little bit of bite to my to my finish. And, that, and that's just a scuff sanding. That's all I did. I didn't sand through my wood. Um, I'm sure you guys, the finish is still completely intact. So I didn't go through it except to take that sheen down, and, add, and that's just to add a little bit of tooth to my to my um, surface. So a couple things I like for applying gel stains. You can either use one of these. These are the Dixie Belle applicator pads. They're really nice for wiping on stains, and they're really inexpensive. So um, they don't leave lint behind. So you can take one of these and you wipe it on, and when you're done, you can toss this. So, I'm not going to use this tonight, and that's because I want to do a full dresser. I'll probably save these for doing the full dresser in. I'm just going to use an old t-shirt rag to wipe this stain on. What? You can brush the stain on. You can wipe it on. We'll try a couple different finishes on here. In fact, I should get myself a chip brush. Are you able to get back there and get me a chip brush? Oh, gosh. i got to do everything. I know. Oh, my God. So I'm just going to take a, a little bit. You can put it on your rag. I went ahead and put it on my piece, and I can wipe this over my furniture piece. This is the custom stain color that I mix. Hey, do my yoga today? <laughs> yeah, Sean, Sean's going to get me a chip brush, so we can try. We'll, we're going to try brushing it on. We'll try a couple different, couple different techniques. Of, putting this on. of course, he, he gets. Can you get me a? Not so nice. That's a, oh, that's, sweet a, that's a premium geez. chip brush. Those are really nice. Those right on top. That's because I use those. So I'm just wiping this stain onto here. Wiping it on like a regular stain. Now, if this isn't the color that I want, I can keep layering this. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to show you guys the difference. This first one that he got me is the Dixie Bell uh, Premium Chip Brush. These are really nice, you guys. You I did say chip brush, right? Yes. That's all I care about. Premium That's chip brush. That's what was in there. Premium chip brush. You want the job done right. This is the, you know, regular, you know, dollar, what are these, a dollar fifty, the regular cheap, cheapy chip brushes. I don't see dollar cents. Cheapy chip brush, premium chip brush. These are too nice for stains. Um, <laughs> so I can brush these on and get it nice and even. The um, the gel stains you want to put on in thin, even coats. And then if I want to build this up, I can. So I want to put on my first coat. Don't try to get it all to the dark color that you want in just one coat. Um, put it on in thin, even coats and let your coverage build up. So it gets a little streaky with the, with the brush. And I'll show you how I fix that. So I'm just going to brush it on fairly evenly, and then I'm going to set this one aside, and I'm going to let it set up for just a minute, and then when it's a little bit sticky, I can come back and wipe those brush strokes out. Oh, Jason's on the list. The list of what? Yeah. What list is that? <laughs> he said, just get the chip brush. No need for all the drama. Oh, yeah. He's on my list. I know, but I got I got it. Uh, the premium chip brushes, they're too nice. I actually like those ones. Uh, this is an oil-based stain, and so I'm going to want to throw it away. And I made sure that I got around to all my edges, and I'm going to set this one aside. Got it pretty even. I don't want to leave this streaky brush stroke look in here, though. You could use this on kitchen cabinets, right? Yes, most definitely. This is awesome for kitchen cabinets. Um, and so then how many coats do you typically as do? As many as you want. So you can decide. Once you let's let's try a thin coat, and we, I can compare it to this one. I just did a little bit thicker with the brush. You get to control <laughs> how dark or light you want your stain color to be by building up the coverage, or you can just do a single coat, 
and get fairly light coverage or you can keep applying. Let it dry, let it dry for 24 hours, come back and you can put another coat on and you can darken it as much as you want. Gel stains act kind of like a paint. They do not penetrate into the wood like a penetrating stain would. You can look on the package of, you know, a stain from the hardware store. I'm gonna use Minwax as an example again. Um, Minwax makes their penetrating stains. It says right on the package it's a penetrating stain. That is gonna penetrate deeper into the wood than a gel stain would. Gel stains sit more on top of your finish, um, like a paint does. So this is more, I'm gonna do just a thin coat. So I'm wiping this back a little bit, but you really have control. You can sit and put, you see how long of an open time this has. I can sit and, and rub this. Now, how does it do for wear? It's gonna wear, it's gonna wear just like a paint would, just like a paint would. You, will, you can top coat this. You don't have to top coat the gel stains, but you can top coat this. Um, after you want to let it dry for about 72 hours and then you can come back and you can add the Dixieville clear coats either Gator Hide or any of the regular clear coats over the top of your gel stain. So I'm gonna, this is a fairly thin coat that I did. So you'll notice the thinner your coats are you can see will we'll show your wood grain a little bit more. Every coat you add you're gonna diminish the wood grain a little bit. These are semi-opaque. So, um, and what that means is as you build up coverage, they're going to get less and less translucent. So you can see, you can make it as dark or as light as you want, but I would let this thin coat dry and come back, put another thin coat on. If you still want it darker, come back and put another thin coat on. So you could do that over the course of a few days if you wanted to build up this coverage and get a darker one. But even just this one coat of stain, let's compare it to the original finish. On like a honey oak. Yeah, I mean, and this is a little, this is a little red. This is kind of a cherry look. But even the original stain, you can see I've darkened it already. I can still see the wood grain, but I've darkened it from this. So you can choose how much coverage or how little coverage you want to get with the gel stain. I think that's really pretty. I would leave this and then build it up. I'm gonna come back to this one that I've let dry a little bit and I'm gonna wipe it back just a little bit. It's a little bit sticky now. And so I'm able to wipe back just the brush strokes without taking off the gel stain. It kind of um, smears them together. So I lose the streakiness of it, but get a little bit thicker coverage. And I'll show you guys this in a minute. I need to be able to look at it. If I tip it up, I get a glare off of it. Yeah, those silly lights. That silly sun. Okay, so these are fairly similar. This one I want to even out. I want to try to get it as even as possible. Because if I've got spots that are thicker than others, that's going to start showing through as I build up this coverage. I'm probably going to need two to three coats of this gel stain to get the look of the finish that they, they are after. So what's your dry time between coats? 24 hours. So let it dry for 24 hours. It will set up. It will have a nice hard coating on it, and then you can come back and add another coat to the top of it. And then you're just applying it with a basically just I'm a cotton t-shirt. Well, this this first one here I did with a chip brush, and then I came back and I wiped it to I let it sit for a minute, and then I wiped out those brush strokes with a rag. It's a little bit thicker than this one; they're very slightly different. But you could just wipe it on with a rag or with a little applicator sponge. Come back and do another one. So this is our third drawer. So the chip brush, I was able to lay it on a little bit thicker. When you wipe, you're wiping it back just as much as you're putting it on. So you're gonna get thinner coverage. But that goes back to the point that you can decide how thick or thin, how much do you wanna change the color of your cabinets. So I'm gonna put on a really thick coat of this just as an example. Now, could you also use this over like your wood grain um, or faux wood grain uh, laminates? Yes, or? yes. It doesn't need to penetrate. It's gonna sit on top of the finish just like a paint would. So the biggest difference between this is, and a paint is this is an oil base. So you wanna be aware of that and you do need to wait that 72 hours before you cover it with any kind of clear coat. And then clean up. It does affect, your, affect what you 
material to use. Like I wouldn't put this on with my nice Dixie Belle brushes because it's oil based. Yeah, you'd have to clean them out with mineral spirits. It makes a big mess. Or my nice shirts. So I just laid this coat on really thick. I don't recommend laying on thick coats, okay? You want to lay on thin, even coats and build your coverage up. That's how you're going to get even coverage without brush strokes and stuff in it. Um, but you can see, I'm just going to show you the variation in the colors. Because now we've kind of got a a light, a medium, and a dark. Do you see them better if I tip them up like this? Does it help at all? Or I see them better if I cut you out of the picture. Oh, yeah. Of Just saying. And then I'll show you the, the original over here. So this one I wiped on with a rag. This is, this is how I would do it, though. I would wipe on the thin, even coats. This one I did the chip brush, and then I wiped out the brush strokes a little bit after it got sticky after a minute. And this one I've got a super thick coat on. I don't recommend putting it on like this. I just want to show you how you can build up the coverage, and it, gets, it can get you know, a light, a medium, and a dark. And you can decide what color you want by building up the coverage on this over the course of several coats. So I'm going to wipe this third one back a little bit. don't want to put your coats on thin. It's kind of reminds me of the rules with uh, using metallic paint. You want to do thin, even coats, build it up. So yeah, you I'm don't see end if up I can with do this brush without, strokes. Without getting a sheen. I'm going to flip to a little bit drier side of my rag and take a little bit more of this off because it's on a little thick. And I did that just to show you guys um, how deep of a color you can get. I'm I'm brush or I'm wiping this on gently because I don't want to I'm not trying to take it all back off. I want it to stay on my surface. I just want to get a thin even coat. Making sure I get around the edges too, because I want those to be stained. Okay, and then back to, to a thinner coat. Um, it's nice and even. I got into the grooves nice and evenly. That it's not gunked up anywhere. And I'm going to let this dry. And I'm going to come back and build these coats up till I get to the full coverage that I want. Um, by the time I'm done with this particular piece, I want most of this wood grain to be gone. I, I'm thinking a good three coats on this. But it's pretty simple to wipe on. And then, even just this one coat from where I started, I've already got a really updated look. It looks better already. It's going gonna, it's gonna to shine my wood up, so it's going to look like I just restained this whole piece, only I don't have to take it back to the bare wood. You can use gel stains over bare wood. In this case, I'm using it over the existing finish with nothing but a little bit of scuff sand, just to give it some bite. So... From here, what I plan to do is I'm going to go ahead and let these dry. I will come back tomorrow and add another coat. And then I'll see what that looks like. And I'm guessing I'll probably need another coat still. Probably have to mix up a little bit more of my gel stain. Um, and then once I have the coverage that I like, I will let it dry for 72 hours and I can come back and I can put the Dixie Belle water-based clear coats on top of it. I'm going to use Gator Hide on this one. And it's going to look like a brand new finish, a brand new wood stained finish, only I didn't have to take it down to the bare wood. So if you've got other wood in your, in your bedroom and you're trying to make a piece match, you can custom mix a gel stain to the color. You know, if, if the, as they come, it's too dark, too light, too gray, too not gray, whatever it is, you can mix a couple of the colors together. So a couple things real quick. Uh, Instagram followers want you to post a link. This is before I forget since, uh, yeah. Um, post a link to the sander. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so what you can do if you're looking for any of my links, always, you guys, they are pinned to the top of my Facebook page. They are also in my profile at Brush by Brandy on Instagram. So you can go to either one, either the first profile or the first post on my Facebook page or my profile on my Instagram page. That's going to open up a tree that will have all my links in there, and there is one for surf prep in there. There's a link for surf prep in there. For surf prep, you can use the code BRUSHED by Brandy 10 and that gives you 10% off too. 
Brush by Brandy 10 for 10% off. But all my links are always pinned to the top of my page and in my profile on my uh, Instagram. Now another question. Uh, the differences between this and Voodoo. Voodoo is a water-based gel stain. <clears throat> So, um, and the difference is it's going to give you thinner coverage. So if you want a really light, soft look, um, you can use the Voodoo's over an existing finish or on raw wood, just like you can with these. Um, you do not have to wait the 72 hours before clear coating the Voodoo's because it's, it's water-based. So you don't need it to, to fully dry like you do these. It's friendly to water-based, whereas these you need to let it dry before it comes in contact with that water-based sting. Now when it comes to Voodoo, can you layer? Yes, you can layer the Voodoo's. Um, another thing I was going to show you is I wanted to run the wood graining tool through this. You can use this with the wood graining tool. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's looking for a 50% code. <laughs> yeah, don't I wish. Please. I have 18 surf park standards. I know if you come across one, please let me know. Um, so you can take this, and if I wanted to just show the wood underneath, this is my Dixie Bell wood graining tool. Uh, this is fresh gel stain on top of here. A little bit of pressure on the handle, and I'm going to pull it and rock and rock and that's just going to give me a little bit of wood grain now it's more subtle because I've got two wood tones on there Here, you didn't have to you see it okay oh yeah you see what I'm talking about yeah pick it up when I'm putting down <laughs> okay so that gave me a little bit of wood grain which is a really cool look I, I really like it I'm gonna do these other two just to show you because I'm gonna have to wipe it out look you just be the professional and you get your stuff done I'll oh, bring I, the funny okay I have to be the professional yeah somebody has to if I press it down harder, it takes off a little bit more and exposes a little bit more of the wood underneath. And this would be pretty with like the gray gel stain over top of something. But you see how that adds a little bit of, of wood grain on top of it? I see just for the contrast, you had you basically started off with just a straight yeah, this, grain. And you can still see the old wood grain through it. <clears throat> so that's a cool look. I have an order for this and they do not want that so I'm going to <laughs> I was just going to mention that. <laughs> yeah. Sorry Sue. Sorry Sue, I didn't mean to freak you out for a minute. My there. bad. What is she doing? So this gel stain is still wet enough that I have a little bit of play in it. It's getting a little bit sticky right now. I can feel it starting to set up. So I'm once you start doing that, can you reactivate it? No, uh, you can use mineral spirits. Yeah, you can. You can use mineral spirits and come back and wipe it back. So but because it's oil, you treat it basically just like a regular, like a stain. Yeah, so so mineral spirits is kind of nice because if you feel like you, you put this on your wood and it gets starts getting too dark, you can come back and wipe it back with mineral spirits. If you want it to, um, you know, lighten up a bit, like you want to create a very light translucent stain, you could mix a little bit of into your gel stain, a little bit of mineral spirits in there. But it's an oil base, and so oil base um, softens up with mineral spirits. Mabel said because of the coloring on your gloves, it looks like you just performed an autopsy. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a crime scene there. No, I, I mean, think I, you did. I think you would have done the pre-autopsy portion I, of that I crime. I end up with stain all over me. It's already on my leg and everything, so I do try to wear gloves when I am staining. One of the few things I wear gloves for. You are delicate. I'm, uh, I had to wipe that back, so I'm just going back and evening this coat back out. Because I want to get to that thin, even coat that I can build up coverage on. With, I don't want brush strokes or white marks in it. I just want it to be nice and thin and even. So, if you were going to, hypothetically... Not that the question was asked, but... <laughs> Are you going to be finishing something? <laughs> I'm going to be doing the pre-autopsy. No. Uh, if you needed to hide a blemish or you can faux, repair. Yeah, you can faux finish with these, and I do that a lot. Um, so I've had a couple pieces where uh, I get them, and they've had the someone sanded through the veneer. So you can take a little bit of gel stain in whatever color your, your wood stain is, and you can kind of faux paint that area so it looks like the wood is still intact. So if I've got a spot that's a little bit damaged, I will take these gel stains and kind of faux paint. I may or may not need the wood graining tool if I need to create a little bit of wood grain in there. Um, 
but you can totally use these gel stains to faux finish around a damaged spot in existing wood. If somebody set a hot pot on your table and you don't want to refinish the whole table, you can take a little bit of gel stain, get it to a similar color, and you can just cover that spot up. It's like a Dr. Seuss book. Yeah. Hot pot. Yeah, hot pot in. Um, now you can do this over gator head as well, right? Just scuff the yeah, top and... Yeah, yeah, you can if you've got a piece that's already finished. You could put paint underneath this if you wanted to uh, put the gel stain over top and run the wood graining tool through that with paint underneath. You could do a look Be like adventurous. that. Yeah, there's um, there's really no limit to it. And then again, if you don't like it, you wait the 72 hours and you can paint over it too if you just, if you just decide you don't like the look. Um, so in this case, let's see, let me find the first one, which I think is this. It should be a little bit, let's see if I can get a second coat on here without pulling this back, because it hasn't been, really been that much time. I'm, I'm gonna brush it, because rubbing will be more have more friction, and then I'll wipe it back a little bit, and we'll see if we can get two coats out of this. But well, if you're- Lori Lance is watching. Oh, hi, that's my aunt. She wants me to call her, by the way, and I have not done so today. What? I know. Oh my gosh. One of those days. Okay, so then I'm gonna just gonna wipe this back. A, I'm, I'm doing it gently because my my coat is still really fresh. But I'm gonna try to give you a look with two coats on here. You can kind of see what building up that coverage will do. I at least when I'm wiping back, try to keep my wipes in long linear strokes going all the way across my piece, so that I don't have spots where my uh, wipe will stop in the middle. Yeah, it's a little too, a little too wet. If I can get it on, it'll dry. But I really don't want that streakiness. That's really what I'm trying to avoid. Let me let this set up for a minute and wipe some of these streaks out. So this gets it a little bit darker. That's closer to the color that I want though. I can start seeing the color that I want coming out of this piece. I wanna make sure I get it all the way around these edges. So this is getting closer, and that's where I think that I'm gonna need three coats of building up coverage to get to the color that I'm after on this piece. So, I hope that was helpful, but that was a little, little lesson on how you can take existing wood and just deepen the wood color using gel stains. It doesn't always have to be a painted finish. If you wanna keep the natural wood look finish, you can use gel stains over the existing finish on your furniture. Um, so anyway, I'm going to let you guys go and I'm going to pop off and I will be back here next Thursday on Facebook and on Instagram to paint live with you guys. My name is Brandy. I'm with Brush by Brandy. Go follow me at, um, on Facebook, Instagram. I'm on Pinterest and I have a ton of YouTube videos as well. All of my live videos go on YouTube after I'm done with them. So you can go in there and you can search if you're looking for a particular topic. Um, I also want to say something to you guys. We are going to start, and I'll add them after I'm done here, but we're going to start using hashtags in the Dixie Bell Lives. And what that's going to do for you guys is you're going to be able to search by a hashtag. If you want to see just videos on gel stain, if you want to see just videos on clear coats, you'll be able to search by these hashtags. Um, so you'll notice we're going to start adding those to our live videos, and that's going to make them searchable for you guys. And then we have a key made that has all the hashtags on it that you'll be able to search. So I think that's gonna be awesome for you guys when you're looking for a video just on a specific topic, you can just search by a hashtag. So look for that coming soon. That's gonna really make all these videos uh, searchable for our audience. Hashtag that's sweet. Hashtag Brush by Brandy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so look for those coming soon. I just introduced them to everyone today. We're gonna start adding them to our lives and then I'll get a key out there in the next week or so. And then you'll be able to start searching and we, we can hopefully start um, adding them to some of our old lives as well. Um, Look at so all these again, hand signals going down. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm a hand talker. We're going to get a helicopter or a plane landing here pretty soon. Um, links for anything I use in this video you can find um, on my Facebook and my Instagram page. But I put my link in the top of this post. Um, if you need to purchase anything online, you can buy the Dixie Doll gel stains there. You could also go there and find your local retailer, find a retailer in your area who carries all the Dixie Bell paint products. So I hope that was helpful. You guys have a great weekend. Have a good weekend. It's beautiful weather here in California. Um, wish you guys a good weekend. I will catch you guys next week. Thank you.